Hey everyone, it's Carter. Welcome to this episode of Making It Up, the show where I talk to writers of all sorts of different backgrounds and types of writing, and we just kind of chit chat about writing and publishing and the highs and the lows and all that good stuff. And at the end, we always make up a short story together, which is usually hard to do, but always fun. Uh, today, I had the privilege to talk to Amanda Kayback. Uh, Amanda is is a lifer for writing. She's been writing since she was in school. She actually got credits, uh, school credit from writing a novel in college. I can't imagine writing a novel in college. Uh, it, you know, it didn't happen for me till much longer after that. Uh, but so she's been writing for a long time. Her work has appeared in the Massachusetts Review, the Tahoma Literary Review, Sequestrum, and the Laurel Review, among others. Um, she had a book out um, a few years ago, The Mathematics of Change, and her recent book released uh, July of 2021 is upended. And we talk quite a bit about that. Uh, it's a book where, you know, um, she wanted to analyze what happens when something happens. Uh, and as you know, which, which is a kind of a novel thing when you think about it, like just the actual what happens when something happens. And because of that idea, you have to choose um, what it, you know, that thing, what is that thing that actually happens in the book? So that's going to be obviously a major event. And in this case, it was a brutal attack uh, against her protagonist, which, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, what, what did that feel like writing that and how much did you leave in and why, why would you choose something so dark as opposed to another event? Um, because I think we both share kind of that, that, that tendency towards, towards darkness, at least, you know, in terms of it helps with the story, it's necessary for the story. Um, so she was fantastic to talk to, and she had a lot of good insights. And, and we, we also spent a decent amount of time talking about the industry, like what's okay. You're, you're a writer. That's fine. How do you get your works published? What is the, what are the pain points of finding agents of, uh, you know, getting an agent and then getting your work published and, or querying um, uh, publishers directly? So there's there's a lot of, uh, I think, practical <laughs> tips and advice in our conversation. And at the end, we make up a, a short story based on uh, uh, Rebecca Taylor's new book, The Secret Next Door. Um, that has that has a surprisingly happy ending. So that would that was nice. Um, anyway, great conversation. I really had fun. This is me talking to Amanda K back. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. I'm a little tired. I, mean, I, I I've been having these like nights. Sorry, I'm, I don't know why I'm getting into this, but <laughs> <laughs> I've been having these nights where like I wake up and I can't fall back asleep. So I start listening to these like sleep hypnosis things on like YouTube. And sometimes I think that makes things weirder for me. Like <laughs> when I eventually get up in the morning, I don't know like what's going on. Yeah. What happened to me? Yeah. Well, yeah. What did they tell me to do in the morning? Right. <laughs> <laughs> So congratulations on 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 uh, the the upcoming re upcoming release I, or recent no, release. No, it came out. Yeah, recent release. Recent yeah. release. Yeah, so. that's exciting. Yeah, definitely. that's your second. My second. Yes. Yeah. Was it a was it a, a then? Now there was about there was about what about four years between the publication of the two. Yes. So was it just it was a, a labor of love? Did you know you were going to write a second all along? Or? Well, I had already written a terrible draft of it by the time the first came out so I, mean, I, was, I, I was i was in up to my uh my elbows by then so it was uh yeah i had, had the, only way, the only way out was through yeah 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 well that's well that's a struggle for a lot of people though right like i've noticed with a lot of writers like they don't get through they don't even get that first draft done and that's the struggle right so just yeah. even getting that first draft as bad as it is it's i mean it's the most important step that's why yes. NaNoWriMo is important to a lot of people and, you know, just to get it done. And it's not going to be good, right? It's never. No. <laughs> I mean, it, it didn't have to be quite that bad, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's never going to be good. Now, did you, that's interesting. So did you have, cause I feel like I lose perspective. Like I just assume it's bad, but when I reread it, I'm like, okay, this part's okay. This part's not okay. But I still feel like I don't know what the rule at large like how will my agent receive this for example yeah so but you could tell you're like this <laughs> this is well bad. i mean no let, okay i'll be honest i i be honest 
<laughs> I wrote a draft of this that looks nothing like the book that came out. Okay. It was a it was the same story, you know, someone gets attacked and then we deal with, you know, how that affects everyone around them. But it was a, a completely different structure. It was about 30,000 words longer. It was it was completely different. And I was like, I think this is pretty good. You know, after I had right. gone through the revision, then I sent it to someone and it was I was Okay, I'll say he didn't have to be quite as harsh <laughs> as he was, but uh, I was trying not to cry in the coffee shop when I was reading what he was writing about it. And, How did uh, you select this person? He he was a, a a former mentor of mine. Okay, and I and and he's not known for his tact, and that's actually <laughs> one thing that I that I like about right. him. So you kind of knew going in, but you were kind of hoping like there'd be a little bit of sugar coating. I was like, wow, store. that was that was harsh. That was harsh. <laughs> wow. Um, and so I had to reevaluate. I was like, okay, well, definitely what I did didn't work. Um, and, and I had kind of two choices about it. I could try to make the structure that I had chosen work, uh, which was not a given. And, uh, and I didn't even know if I would be able to get it published if I did make it work. And then, or I could try a, a different structure, which is what we ended up with um, in the final draft. And, and that would be, that I had a, I had a better, better confidence about making that work, but that even that was another three years of, of labor to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> so much work. It was, it was really, yeah. I wouldn't actually necessarily call it a labor of love. It was just, just by the labor. end, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this, is, this is, this, this needs to end. Yeah. Yeah. So you couldn't, yeah. I, I had, so my first three books never sold. Um, but my second one, or maybe I don't remember one of the three, like, I think my third one, I gave to my agent and she's just like, this is unpublishable. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was really like, it was, she's like, it's too dark. It's too depressing. You know, maybe the Brits will like it, but, yeah. and I couldn't let it go. Like, so to your point of, you know, going back for three more years, like I rewrote the entire thing, you know, like I added basically a second protagonist. It was really a lot of work and it still didn't sell, but I couldn't let it go. And yeah. it sounds like you're a little bit like that too. Well, I mean, I'll be honest. There are four books that I wrote before oh, okay. Mathematics of Change, which was the first one that got mm -hmm. published that, you know, they're, they're varying degrees of, okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I know I realize okay, your practice, I'm, your the, practice books. Yeah, the, exactly. I kind of distilled them all into the first, like there are so many elements of the very, of the four previous books distilled down into the first one that I actually like, oh, interesting. made decent. Uh, so I, I got them mostly out of my system. Although I am, I am actually going to go back to the, to one of them. To and, one of them. And so, completely rewrite it. Yeah. Let's go back a little bit. So you did, were you, are you from Florida? Oh, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm here against my will. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how I understand most of Florida to be. <laughs> well, so, yeah. <laughs> where, where, so where did you grow up? I grew up outside of Chicago. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. So that's vastly different. Very different. I lived I lived my first 40 years in the north. So it's this, wow. is, this is rough. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. We'll make it through. It'll the the one right. thing I remember missing about, and this is back in the early nineties, I lived there for like 18 months. I, the only thing I remember missing at all were like the thunderstorms. They were, they were like, there were great thunderstorms. The, and, the weather, the weather events are, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're really nice. They are. And, and back then I was a renter. So when there was like hurricane mornings, I'm like, bring it on. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I don't miss anything else about that. So, and, and did you grow up with siblings or? I have an older sister okay. who's actually a, a younger sister, if you really actually knew us. So oh. our roles are reversed somehow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You're the mature one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the tattletale, you know, however you want to say, however you want to say it. Yeah. Where, where does the, where do you think the creativity comes from uh, and the desire to write? Do you recall any kind of, I'm always interested in people's kind of writers origin stories that like, cause sometimes there's an inflection point and sometimes you're just like, I don't know. I just like to tell stories. Yeah, it was probably when my mom dropped me on my head. You know, I mean, something <laughs> something happened there. It all know. broke open. But yeah, that's right. Well, my dad. Uh, so I was uh, I was good at math, 
and science. And when you're good at math and science growing up, you're, you're basically going to be an engineer, right? right. I mean, that's yeah. like, you, you don't, you have no idea what an engineer does, but you're going to be an engineer. Was that from uh, your, your parents were the same way? Or are they mathematically think, inclined or? Uh, my dad. So my yeah. dad, uh, he started out as an engineer in school mm -hmm. and then um, came to his senses and changed his major to English. Uh, so he had like, two my dad did the exact opposite of that. Oh, really? He was an English major. He <laughs> became an engineer. Wow. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. So he, he used to write in college and then he got married young to my mom, uh, who was even younger. And at some point he couldn't, my, my dad's a little obsessive. Um, at some point he couldn't write every day anymore. And so he said, well, if I can't write every day, I'll read every day. And so he read every day. He has read every day. Uh, for the last 50 some odd years. Good for him. Uh, and, and actually once he retired, he did start writing again. Uh, but, you know, he, so he always had that in him and he, you know, he, he played music, he loves music, listened to music. And so, you know, there was, um, there was all of that in the house, a lot of reading, uh, music playing, and I just kind of absorbed it. I don't know, I don't know where the the, the writing really came from for a long time. I thought, Oh, I'm going to be a musician, a classical musician. Huh. Uh, and then I, what, came what did to you my play? Senses. I played the French horn and uh -huh. I sang. Um, and then I came to my senses and I was like, no, that's, <laughs> I don't want to sit in a practice room my entire life. Uh, so you're like, I, I want to make serious money. So I'm going to become a writer. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. No, <laughs> I came to my senses. I, uh, no, I've come to my sense of several times in my life, uh, but, but I guess I've never truly come to my senses with writing because uh, writing is a nonsensical activity. So what did you study? I, so I started out in engineering. Okay. I did a year of engineering and then I said, this is just for the birds. It's really boring. Uh, and so, and I, and I really wanted to take other classes and I had a four-year scholarship in engineering as a four-year program. And uh, so I was like, well, I'll, uh, but I, but I am a reasonable person. Um, and so I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll change my major to physics. Uh, cause strangely enough, you can physics it, at my school. I went to Boston university was a bachelor of arts. So you okay. actually are required to take a bunch of huh. humanities and stuff with it. And but so do I you forfeit get... your scholarship by changing away from engineering? Nope. No, nope, oh. it was, uh, it was whatever I wanted to do as long as I did well at it for four years. So okay. I got a degree in physics and a minor in English. Uh, okay. so I got to, and I actually got eight college credits for writing a novel in college. So I was, I just totally gamed the system and did what I was going to do anyway and got credits for it. So, so you can just not, you can just write a novel, but you can write a <laughs> novel of, I mean, it's got to pass some kind of yeah. muster obviously it's, uh, yeah it <laughs> it's like a dissertation you have to you have to present it yeah. um but that's pretty that's interesting i didn't know you could do that well huh. i yeah i kind of just worked the system a little bit i i got to do like basically an independent study work for distinction thing and got one of the english professors to sign off on it and it was a work of science fiction so i somehow spun it as being you know related to my major of study and it was total bullshit but it was a lot of fun but did you treat it like when you were done with it? So that was the first book I assume you wrote. No, I wrote them before. <laughs> before that. Okay, so you, you started. You started early. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna do it. I knew I was gonna do it anyway. I had this idea, and I was gonna write it. And so why not have to take fewer classes and get credit for it? Did you have further aspirations with it though, in terms of like, or this is just, I'm treating this as homework? And oh, or, I or, thought I had delusions of grandeur you yeah. know i was like oh i'm gonna be a self-supporting writer by the time i'm 30 right and uh yeah i'm 46 and <laughs> I, I i don't think i've actually made money on my writing i think i'm still in debt so it's 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 crazy right like yeah it's insane it's and as you get to know like it, more people in the community and go to conferences and, and even through this uh, podcast you know you get to know all these writers and so few are you know the sole breadwinner through their through their writing i mean there are a few yeah um but it's 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 crazy and and you know and some people can do it but like okay at what cost am i going to scale back my lifestyle to write full time you know yeah. so you know, uh, you have to, 
have to I knew early on I, I wasn't going to survive as a starving artist so I had to had to adjust <laughs> the expectations you have a taste for the finer things in life and... <laughs> I have a taste for like things some <laughs> things at least <laughs> like a food. roof over my head right know? right yeah. that's totally true um, yeah so but then what did you start doing after after college uh, actually, I painted houses. Okay. Because I needed a job. Yeah. I needed to pay rent, uh, and I w- had had lived in an engineering lab basically for four years in college. So I was in a basement lab, and I never saw the sunlight. So you're doing so exteriors. I like, yeah, I was doing. That's uh, a lot exteriors. of work. It was a lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work. And then I was like, okay, this is this clearly isn't going to be a career, um, and uh, and so I started. This was you know, back in the mid nineties. So I would Mm -hmm. actually look in the paper. I was in Boston. I lived in Boston at this time. I looked in the paper for, for jobs. I mean, it was just like, it was so different from today. You know, you just open the classified section and you circle the ones that you'd want to apply to, you know, you'd like mail your resume. And, uh, and I, you know, I tried to schedule interviews for cloudy days or rainy days when I wouldn't have to be house painting. Um, (laughs) Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, I know. So after a couple of months of house painting, I got a job as a, a technical editor. So okay. like, all right, well, I could use, you know, some of my science and math and some of my English and help these engineers write reports, which is about the most boring thing you can do. But I was like, well, I don't care. You know, I just need something to pay the bills. And... Yeah. And it's discipline, right? In terms of, you know, being in and of words, <laughs> you know, and, and, and structure and all that kind of stuff is still yeah. building a, an important muscle, although you'd already kind of had the muscle. So what, how, what was, what was the, what, what was the origin of the first book? When did you start writing that? Uh, that was, I'm trying to remember if it were my freshman or sophomore year in college, it might've been between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, uh, oh, okay. it, was so. it was a coming of age story, yeah. you know, it was a piece of crap, but I was like, <laughs> you know, I had written, I had written short stories up to then, which were also pieces of crap. Um, but I was like, well, I can't really say I'm going to be a writer. You can't make a, make a living as a writer writing short stories. Right. I mean, you, you like, you definitely, unless you're Alice Monroe, right. <laughs> right. You can't do right. It. It's, it's yeah. All right. Unless it's like, uh, you know, memoir essay kind of a thing, like a, Sedaris kind of a thing. So, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, well, you know, until I write a novel, I can't make that declaration to anyone. You know, I have to. I, have I think to you can't there. even after you write like five <laughs> oh novels. Oh my god! I, like- I I I did not say I was a writer to anyone for right. like years and years and years. Yeah. Yeah. Once I got over that little ego trip I had in college. Yeah. Right. Well, college doesn't count. But the <laughs> imposter syndrome is totally real. It's yeah. complete. Like, I don't think you know. So because I have a full-time job. And so if I'm at a cocktail party, you know, I will say I'm both, but I never lead with writer. And oh yeah, it's, never. It's, mm-hmm. it's, and you know, and then you feel like, all right, I don't, what are we doing here? <laughs> I don't like that. Cause I don't want to talk about what I do during the day. Like that's boring. I'd rather talk about writing, but then, yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't tell anyone I was a writer until my first novel came out and then I could at least be like, yeah, you can <laughs> look me up and I have a book. Like it's, it's for real. It's not a dozen stories in literary journals you've never heard of, you know? So what was that process like for you of, you know, finishing your first book and then, okay, do I get an agent? Do I submit it directly to publishers? Do I self-publish? Did you go through all those kind of yeah, different thoughts? <clears throat> yep. Yep. So I, I tried agents. I think I tried between 50 and 70 for the first book and then cried you on the couch. Sh- you should have stuck bit. it out because my, I got mine on my like 75th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, and then I started submitting to some small presses and then I found, found my press found me, you know, I found my yeah. press. Yeah. Um, and, and literally a month before this is everyone's story, right? A month before they call, I'm, I'm having a complete crisis, existential crisis about why am I doing this? What am I doing? This is never going to amount to anything. This is just so painful. Yes, I love writing, but this, the publishing side of it, I should just give it up. And then 
I get a call on a random Sunday and I never answer my phone. I get pissed when people call me <laughs> and I'm like, hello. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And then this, this woman starts talking and I don't hear the first half of what she says. Cause you're never paying attention when you answer the phone. And, and then suddenly I'm hearing something about my book and I'm like, wait, what, who, <laughs> who is this? You know? And I was just so mean and they wanted to buy my book. And I was like, wow, this is okay. Wow. And the fact that they called and it wasn't an email, that's, uh, yeah, that's what I was, this is, I don't know who this is. I don't know what they're trying to sell me. It's a Sunday night. I'm on the couch. I'm reading. I don't want to be disturbed. And, and yet that was the, the best news. So what do you think had, had that not happened? What, what do you think? Do you think you would have went, gone on to writing something else and just be like, okay, that's another one that's maybe not going to do anything or do you yeah. think you would have, okay. So you wouldn't have just given up writing. I, it's, you know, it's impossible at this point. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't. What's your, like, what do you, what do you, what do you like least about the actual process of writing? Like where, where you really get discouraged? Is it the actual, like you said, the, the, the publishing, the business side of it? Oh yeah. I mean, definitely. I hate the publishing and the business Why? side of it like because you, it's just, it's so fickle. Yeah. Um, I right. mean, it's it, it, because it does essentially boil down to a numbers game. I mean, you hear the numbers we're throwing out, you know, 75 uh, rejections. Right. Um, it, you just you have to. It, it, it's no judgment at all, necessarily on the quality work. Sometimes it is. Sometimes you send something out before it's ready. But right. uh, it's it's finding the right person at the right time with the right piece that's going to resonate with them. And there are so many pieces and so many people and so much time that and the market's constantly in flux. It's constantly in flux. Yeah. And I don't think, I mean, I write a lot of very kind of classic, especially on the, on a short story side, really classic traditional short stories. And there hasn't been a super wide market for those <laughs> huh. like my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you're not chasing trends. Yeah. Oh Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, the publishing side is, uh, you know, you have to, you have to just, you know, there are times where I'm just like, I just, I just, I, I'm not up for submitting right now. Like I just can't handle that deluge of rejection. And most of the time it's all right. It just kind of slides off my back. And every once in a while, it's like a little stab to the heart and you're like, oh, I had, I had hopes for that one, but yeah. 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 It's, and it's so, it's so slow and it's just, it's just, it, and you make no money and it's impossible <laughs> and, and you, you, no one ever notices you and you're just like, I'm just shouting into the wind. This is just, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you have to supplement with your own, um, you know, whether, whether it's social media or you get your own PR team or whatever, which is always awkward, you know, yeah. and that's not something, I mean, you're already saying I'm not comfortable calling myself a writer and now I have to <laughs> self promote. <laughs> You know, right. yeah, and and it seems like you with your uh, logic brain, your math brain, you know, and there's no formula to anything. No, <laughs> like no, like you said, it is very fickle. I and I and I, it's funny. I felt that in college too. I was like, okay, I I totally understood how grades were calculated in my physics classes and my math classes. They it was appalling to my <laughs> humanities friends how they were calculated because the huh. curve is real uh, yeah. there. But yeah, um, but I, you know, I had it was so subjective in my English classes, I was like, I, I don't know why I got this grade. You know, I mean, it's just, it, it, it never really made sense to me, but I, but it's, you know, it's something I'm, it sounds silly, but you know, I've grown so accustomed to doing and is, is so integral to my life that I, I couldn't stop writing if I really, well, maybe if I really wanted to, I could stop, but I clearly don't want There'd to. be a hole. There would be, there a, would be a hole. There would yeah, be I'm a not myself. Hole. Yeah. Right. I, uh, right. Yeah. Cause there's that, I mean, I, you know, I don't write very much a day, um, but I write every day and that's like a sacrosanct kind of, you know, five to 6 PM, you know, it's so ritualistic. And some yeah. days I just literally sit there. I'm like, I, cause I don't outline. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm just going right. to sit here and think, and maybe something will come to me, but I still need that hour. Just like I need my exercise every day. I don't feel right unless I do that. Yeah. And so I can't imagine that, you know, okay, I'm retiring from writing. Like, what does that, <laughs> what does that even mean? Maybe I'm retired from publishing, publishing, but right. yeah, I couldn't imagine retiring from writing, but your so your new book is with the same publisher, correct? It is. Yeah. So you had, so you had, I assume a, a good 
or decent experience with that first novel, like your relationship with your publisher? They, they're they great. Um, they're, they're real champions of my work. When I started with them, they were a very new press. Um, Who are they so, again? Uh, they're called Brain Mill. Brain Mill. Um, and they've, they've now been around for, I think, six years, maybe a little mm-hmm. more. Um, they've, they've put out a bunch of titles now. Uh, but I, you know, I'll admit when I had when I had upended, I shopped it around. I was like, let me see if I can get to well, a bigger sure. press, or um, you know, maybe it's, it's see if I can land an agent with it. And I think I think I had about um, yeah another 70, 75 agent queries with that that didn't go anywhere. Um, there's some more press submissions that didn't go anywhere, and then I you know sent it over to them. I'm like, well, let me know if you're interested. <laughs> in this piece of crap <laughs> it took me five years to maybe write maybe your pitch is the problem <laughs> yeah, right. i hope your query letters weren't <laughs> didn't lead with that right. and they and they loved it um oh and, that's great and, and you know we we work really well together and they're they are real like i said champions of my work so it's um you and know, that's a pleasure a, being with them for being a for so a press that's six years old i mean that's a tremendous amount of struggle, right? Like small presses in general, it's it's yeah. not great uh, and environment. And having started in the last six years, I'm sure that's, you know, I mean, I don't know how they're doing, but that, you know, that's, that's gotta be, so I always, I always have such respect for them because they're so committed to getting mm-hmm. stories out there, especially from, yeah. you know, voices that you might not have been familiar with, you know, but you just hope like, oh, I hope they can keep this going. I mean, my first yeah. publisher was new and they folded six months after my first book came out. I'm like, all right, yeah. well, and you find out that happens all the time. It, yeah. Yeah. Which is definitely. a real shame, but that's, it is, that's the truth of it. And with further, you know, consolidation and, you know, in the industry, it gets, it gets harder and harder and it propels people maybe rightly so to self publish. But I always think that that's, I always think that's a mistake. It, yeah, this, I guess it depends on your what. What is your motivation? What do you What do you want to achieve with your writing? And some people just want to see a book out there, right. um, but a lot of times those, like you kind of mentioned it earlier, those books aren't ready ready to go yet. And now and now it's out there. Now and it's out there. You, you can't, can't pull back. that back. Yeah. 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 So you so you never considered. No, partly you, because you needed I... that validation. Well, I, I would like the validation. I, I also like to improve. You know, I like to work with people who are going to tell me things that uh, that I could do better in my book. So if you can find a good editor, that's that's always good. But uh, I also knew I was I was never going to be able to self promote. Like never ever. I mean, <laughs> so you don't. Never. <laughs> <laughs> hence, hence hiring somebody who can do that for you. That's right. Yeah. Right. So I didn't with my first book, I did with my second book, I, I could see the difference. It's actually been a lot of fun um, right. to talk with people like you uh, about uh, about me about the book um, to write some articles. Uh, it's it's but but to actually make all that happen myself. We, it, it I mean, I can barely make a phone call, you know, I mean, so I'm, I'm we know you don't person. like to answer the phone call. <laughs> I know. Well, I can't make them either. And um, I mean, the rock, paper, scissors around the doorbell ringing in this house is like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the, the promotion is really tough. And so like, you know, with every book of mine, I've always hired somebody because I figured like one, I don't, you know, I don't know how to do stuff. <laughs> so right. please help me. And, and two, it's like, you know, I got to give this book every chance possible, you know, and if it doesn't do well, it's not like, okay, I should have just hired. And just hiring a PR team doesn't mean any kind of guarantee of success. Right. But it's, it's good to do because you do get exposure out there and right. um, you're, you're with K, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And they're, Dana's great. Like the yeah. team is very smart and they're very savvy around almost around statistics, like the, the numbers, like it's not just like, you know, the traditional, like they really know what, what focus promotions are. And that, that mm-hmm. makes, makes a huge difference. So what is, um, how would you classify this book? Like, are you, you know, cause it seems like it's got a little bit of for sure, like thriller esque qualities to it. I mean, there's a brutal attack. There's a brutal um, attack. Yeah. Was that, was that always going to be kind of, the central part of that book is like, this is, I, I, I need to write about this specific event because this informs everything else. No, 
<laughs> so the, the genesis of the book, as stupid as it sounds, was what happens when something happens. Yeah. And that could mean anything. Right. And I didn't know what the something happens was for a really long time. I just had this idea of I want to look at what happens when something happens. And I had a vague sense. It was really around a structure that this book didn't end up being in. But, um, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with, uh, with friendships and relationships mm -hmm. um, and how and perception. So how people perceive you and how we perceive ourselves. And, right. And the huge uh, disconnect between that. Yes, <laughs> yes exactly. Uh, and, and then how, you know, how we affect each other. Uh, which is, you know, kind of a, a physics problem of people, right? Uh, right. It's, a, it's a dynamic uh, system. And so I, you know, I really wanted to, I, I'm always kind of looking at that in my stories, but I really wanted to focus on, yeah, what really, I didn't want to focus on the attack. I wanted to focus on the aftermath of it right. and how it affected everyone, including the, the person who was attacked, but, but, but not minimizing the effect that it has on everyone around her. But so it's interesting when you think about writing a book about what happens when something happens, what that means is the pivotal event is something happens, right? Yes. There's got to be a big something happens. It and and for you, that became a very dark event, right? Because it, it could have been anything. It could, it could have, have been winning the lottery. It could have been whatever. And, 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 and your mind went to that. Do you yeah. And actually, you know, it's funny because some people were like, are you sure you want it to be that? And I was like, well, I mean, no, but it makes everything else work, you know? I mean, in ways it's, I mean, it's a horrible thing to put, put one of your characters through a brutal attack. Um, but there were really, there, there were things that, um, that had to be in place for the rest of the story to make right. sense. Right. For, for the rest of the story as I had it in my mind. Um, right. So she had to be physically injured. Yeah, you know, it, it, she had to be uh, had to be something that um, was was just so emotionally scarring. Right. That it wasn't a car would, accident. She was attacked. It that's was, right. It was she was personal. attacked. Yeah. yeah. And so there would be secrets. There would be withdrawal. There would be all of these things that would would really affect everyone around her. And so, unfortunately, you know, in my mind. It, I'm sure there are many other things that I could have figured out you know, if I were smarter uh, to make happen than than force her to be attacked. But she, but that, but that's what I ended up with. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be this logic piece, right? It's like this right. is that every story has a thousand possible directions, and and whether it organically goes one way or another, it's like that's the direction you chose to go with it, and that's your make what it's what makes it your story. Yeah, was it? I mean, you probably get asked this, but like, was that the, when you actually got to that scene, you have to make a conscious decision about, okay, how much detail do I go into? What is, what is my um, appetite for writing this? What is the reader's appetite for reading extensive detail on it? What, how did you go about that process and how difficult was it? There was way more detail in earlier drafts. Mm -hmm. I went through the whole thing to partly to understand it myself, like what actually happened. Right. Uh, and then the, the, what ended up getting published was just the very first snippet of it. Uh, and then you, whose you decision was that? More. That was, was that, mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it was, I, I got some feedback, um, but, but I was like, you know, part, part of what this, the story is about is what you communicate and what you don't. And having the reader find out about what happened during the attack and what didn't happen during the attack through these snippets of memory and of disclosure uh, and also not knowing what was true and what was not true. I mean, you right. have you have a, a little bit of an unreliable narrator. Yeah, you do. Uh, I think is, you know, kind of important to the story. And that's and that's critical, too. Like, it's I think it's fascinating to have you know, an unreliable narrator who's not being coy, but being like, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can trust my own mind. It's not like I'm yeah. trying, to, trying to be unreliable, but my, my mind is unreliable to me. Yes. So I'm unreliable to the narrator. Yeah. Um, 
And I think it makes sense that you wrote out the attack because I think, you know, I think there's a level of respect that you have to pay to your characters when you're succumbing them to violence and and making it real and and really understanding physiologically and you know emotionally what what are, what actually happens yeah. when things like that. I mean, there's great books about how to write violence that are like this is actually what the human body does when it gets a blow to the head or whatever. And I think it's good to understand it because otherwise, otherwise, I, I think it's you know it is disrespectful to your characters to just treat it as just you know oh they get beat up and they get beat up yeah 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 so how how have you been enjoying its release have you like do you feel like okay this is different than last time or this is what i'm hoping is going to happen yeah it's it's the first one kind of came and went without a trace a little bit yeah. um I, I actually did some readings it was it was great i got to travel around a little bit um with the first one with the first one yeah uh and then it you know it disappeared as they all do. Yeah. And then, you know, the second I just, you know, I had some, some more specific goals for it and we worked toward those some, some we made and some we didn't. Um, but just to, uh, be able to talk with people who don't know me yeah. <laughs> about the book yeah. is, uh, it's a real pleasure. I mean, you spend so many hours, uh, in your own head about it in, in your own room about it. And, um, and it's great to talk with friends and family about it. And I'm happy that they're excited about it and they think that it's good, but, um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not writing journals here. I'm right. not writing for myself. I, I want things to have right. a broader audience or things I, I want to evoke in other people through these, these works of mine. And so, uh, getting, getting a little bit of a, a broader play for it is pretty exciting. And are you able to now now that the book is in the wild are you able to just kind of i, I know you're promoting it but are you able to kind of let it go do you ever look back yeah. like oh, i wish i like no yeah. i am so done with it yeah and it's funny <laughs> because you know i'll i'll pick it up to to read for something and i was like okay yeah this 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 is okay this is this is this is pretty good it, it turned out okay yeah you know yeah. and now and i'm also i'm also you know just from what I'm writing and what I actually have been writing for the last few years beyond it. I mean, this thing was done yeah. for years right. before it came out. So I actually had to kind of remember what was in the book. Like when it right. finally actually got released, I was like, I should, I should read this again because I don't remember everything in there. I, you know, it's funny, like I'll pick up a book to do a reading. I'm like, okay, they want five minutes. So I'll practice and this and that. And I'll, I'll start making edits. And I'm like, it's so much better now <laughs> that I edited right, it down for this reading. Why, why did I just write like that to begin with? But you just right. have zero perspective for it. But yeah, I, I struggle to pick up my books and even look at, I mean, I, some of my early stuff, I, I haven't looked at in decades. <laughs> yeah. Rightly so. Don't, and what, um, yeah, just what don't. is your, what is your next uh, venture? Uh, well, I am trying to sell another book now. Uh, I, I'm only up to about 25 agent rejections, so I've got a long road ahead. Uh, but it's 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 a little it's a little bit different. It's it's I call it a comedy. Um, I've been told it's not very funny, but you know that's okay. <laughs> it's a humorless comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're treading new territory. That's right. Yeah. So. Um, so it, it, it was definitely a lot more fun to write than upended uh, as 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 interesting as upended one was and kind of as, as proud of it as I am. It's I really needed a break from doom and gloom. Um, have, have you found just because you've gone through different stages of your career querying agents, has that changed over time, that process or, you know, are you going back to some of the same agents? I am going back to some of the same ones. So anyone who requested a full you know, for the last one, I, I query again. And, and when they don't request a full, it's worse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, um, hopefully they yeah. won't remember me. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> well, they're off my Christmas card list. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. It's, I, I think, I think, you know, you refine your approach, you know, how am I writing this query letter? How am I writing the synopsis? Um, how do I inject, uh, you know, the book's personality, especially 
uh, important for the, you know, not funny comedy is how do <laughs> I, how do I give it the same atmosphere as the book and kind of hook that in, in such a, that. in two sentences, you know, or yeah. whatever it's, yes, it is yeah. such a talent, like in, and an art as well to, to do it and to only just send out a couple at a time. Cause if you start getting rejections, like maybe you learn from that, maybe you, you, you tweak it a little bit, but yeah, yeah, it's fickle. And you is try the right not word. to just, to just like, you know, shotgun blast a hundred of them because right. you know you want to make sure that you can say something it's it's a lot of work i mean yeah. queering agents is a lot of work which which is which you should do you should yeah. do the work and not just right. shotgun um anyone who reps literary fiction you know you should right. actually do the work and so you're you're reading up on them you're looking at their tweets you're looking at the other people they represent you're looking at their wish lists you're you're tailoring you know each query at least part right. of each query to them i mean it's like if you get three or four done in a session that's actually pretty good so it's you know and then you, while you're doing that you're not writing which is the thing that you're jonesing for anyway and so right it, right yeah. that's exactly right and back back when i was doing it it was snail mail so i'm like is this the right weight of paper is this does this convey confidence, this piece of paper? <laughs> and then you're mailing them out. And then it would be like, I remember some, like I'd get a response like literally a year later. And it, yeah. the rejection letter had been, you know, 400 times copied over. Uh, you know, it wasn't even freshly printed out. It was just from a stack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's brutal. Hmm. Well, listen, we're going we're gonna to do a little storytelling and then wrap up. So this is the okay. fun part. And I, and today I went with, um, I always just kind of pick three books from random, kind of randomly, but today I went with a Colorado theme. These are all Colorado authors, um, for, <laughs> for whatever that's worth. And you're okay. going to pick one of these books. So I don't know if you know, Stephen Graham Jones, mongrels. I know this did quite well. Um, he's a bolder guy. Um, this is actually a book that's coming out, uh, secret next door next week. Um, by Rebecca Taylor. She's, um, we're doing an event at the book bar here in, in Denver. And Emily Littlejohn, A Season to Lie. So probably a mystery, a thriller, and horror is probably Stephen <laughs> Graham Jones is like, that is what he's known for. So choose one of those. Uh, how about the second one? Okay. So the one that's coming door. soon. Yes. So, and choose a page between one and 350. Uh, 279. Okay. And a sentence between one and five. Three. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to read a sentence. Uh, oh, it's a good one. Um, and then just give me a couple sentences, whatever you want to do. And then I'll do a couple. And just after a couple minutes, we'll, we'll call quits. Okay. The rest of the school was out and parents were learning from principal Evans carefully crafted email that a search was being conducted for a missing student. Many parents suspected the student had wandered off themselves to do something illicit in the woods but they all paid lip service to the search. Janet knew differently. Janet knew he wasn't missing. Well, maybe he was missing to them, but Janet knew the kid was exactly where he wanted to be. Janet thought about telling Ed where the kid was, but Ed had his own things going on these days and wasn't paying attention. So she decided to go find him herself. She got into her car and drove the three miles it took to get up to the country lane back over by where Ed's barn was. She got out and the leaves, the fall leaves crunched underneath her feet. And she knew he was okay, but she still hesitated opening up that barn door. The hinges creaked in the cool night air and she heard a rustling inside. Barns were the creepiest freaking places. Implements of destruction hanging on the walls. Dusty, hay-strewn corners. The scurrying of tiny critters. But of all of the senses, what hit her the most was the smell. As she walked inside that barn, there was a distinct smell that had no business being inside a barn. It was tangy almost, as if she could tasted on the tip of her tongue. There was a sweetness that felt really wrong. Ed and the kid were baking pies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, we're calling it there. I, I want to end it right there. <laughs> I love how it got happy at the end. <laughs> 
that's but a what feels, kind of pies Carter? that's what true kind of pies? that that's that's true it could be like a sweeney todd kind of a situation yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun and that was a, a nice ode to uh rebecca taylor's book coming out next week well listen amanda it was so great to, to meet you and hear about your book and kind of your your trajectory and uh <laughs> You know what you love and hate about the industry you love the writing you hate the industry <laughs> that's probably not going to change probably not so i wish you all the success with your book and uh yeah it was great chatting with you well thanks so much for having me on carter it was a blast take care enjoy the rest of your week yeah you too thank you bye that was my conversation with Amanda Kabeck. Uh, like I said, she had a lot of good advice. She had a lot of good life experiences with writing that um, I think will apply to people trying to uh, get their works out there and get into the industry. Uh, so she was great. I really enjoyed talking to her. And if you want to find out more about her, you can just go to amandakabeck.com. And if you want to find out more about me or subscribe to my newsletter, please do just go to carterwilson.com. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and or listening. More episodes coming out soon. In the meantime, take care.